lads, lassies, welcome back to the YouTube. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope that you're safe. I hope that most importantly you're healthy and I hope that you are staying positive in what is a crazy time right now. I'm going to try avoid talking about that too much because I am no expert in coronavirus or economics or health. And instead, I've decided to use this time where I'm at home in Ireland, not able to travel, not able to wakeboard, to still create some interesting and entertaining content. So starting from now, every two to three days, I'm going to be uploading a podcast with various different pros or people within the industry or anyone who's interesting, really. Um, the first one is with Ryan, Ryan and Liam Peacock, two brothers from the UK who are incredible wakeboarders, like phenomenal, and also unbelievable at YouTube. The video quality is insane. They're uploading loads. They're always traveling, obviously not now, but in general. I will leave a link to their channel in the description, but make sure to check it out. And yeah, over the coming weeks, we've got some pretty interesting people. I've got Harley Clifford lined up. I've got Sean Murray lined up. And to be completely honest, they're the only other two people I've contacted. But we're going to have a lot of cool insights into the sport. I want to go into the history of the sport. I want to go into the business side of it. I want to go into it, the progression side of it, the competitive side of it. I want to basically get needy and gritty. And hopefully the more I do this, the more I'll learn, the more I'll be able to ask good questions. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. I'm not going to prolong this anymore. Without further ado, or whatever it's called, um, yeah, here's the podcast. Also, quick one, please let me know in the comments any future guests you'd like to have on. I think I have access to a lot of people within the wakeboard industry, so do let me know. And also, obviously, the quality is not insane. It's filmed through a webcam system. Um, potentially, if this goes well, I will invest in making it better. But for now, I hope it's good and enjoy. I believe we're recording on all. Yeah, channels. it says recording. Uh, on okay, happy yes. days. Well, guess we're live. How are you boys doing? Yeah, good, good man. I'm just going to switch off my uh, notifications real quick. Oh, yeah. Get those Tinder notifications coming should through. I, right now, so. Should I actually do it properly? Huh? Should I do it properly quick in like, my notifications? And we won't have any disruption. Oh, we can yeah. just try again. Give me one second. <laughs> Hidden Tinder, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's never, never simple with us. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so yeah, obviously at the moment, I'm guessing you look like you're at home. Yes, we are. Correct, yeah. How's, how's things in the UK? So basically at the moment, we've just been told that we've gone into this sort of lockdown phase at the moment. And uh, obviously we were wakeboarding a little bit when we came back from our travels and it was super good to be riding at Liquid. We just got the new Rewinch Winch, which has uh, been super fun. And we've been hitting some spots on that with the boys. But now we're in this sort of lockdown phase. It's two or three weeks i think where we're not allowed to leave unless it's basically basic exercise yeah. or uh, to get food and stuff so right now just chilling i've seen though that you guys have been able to wait for it in your house yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um mystic uh our like team manager sent out a little email to the whole mystic team and just said that basically they're running a little kind of stories campaign where each team rider has to post what they're doing in the meantime, during the quarantine of coronavirus, you know, so mine's coming up. I've still got to come up with a little idea of what I'm going to do. I'm thinking of doing something like stop motion, you know, something that will kill a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely got time. That's kind of my idea here. I was like, well, we've got time, so do stuff. And I don't really know, like, I haven't really prepared. Like, I've got a few things jolted down, but I was just kind of going to let the conversation go. And so, like, I guess, I don't know, I, I kind of, I'm fascinated. The one thing I always find interesting about kind of the way, obviously you have your own brands as well, but the whole Peacock Brothers brand and how that works and how even like sponsors look at that. Are you treated as one unit or is it kind of, are you treated as Ryan and Liam separately? I mean, kind of as we were growing up, um, obviously we're both just Ryan Peacock and Liam Peacock and our dad from when we were quite young is always like, oh, you know, you should start a Peacock Brothers website or, or something like that. And we're just like, oh, shut up, Dad. You know, it's nothing really, <laughs> like, whatever. And then, basically, as we started traveling more and more, we were just together the whole time. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of when I had my, my big knee injury, like, three, four years ago now, um, I was just sat at home doing nothing, and I was just watching a load of YouTube. And I was like, well, there's so many people that are just traveling a lot and filming, you know, that are working full-time jobs. I was like, me and Liam are literally doing that right now with wakeboarding so we may as well just kind of start filming it doing it as the peacock brothers um because yeah we're always together and that's kind of how it came about and from there we just started marketing ourselves as as that you know 
yeah and then but then when you come to marketing yourself like obviously if i'm approaching sponsors or working with sponsors it's like just me and and do they look at you like even don't go into like the financials of it but today is it is it just you the brand like it was the same with the breadus so i used to always wonder how that worked and um, like how, yeah. how does that kind of go about it? so i think for us like what i'd say is we there's definitely like being together does have its strengths massively and then there's also like certain weaknesses but i think for the most part, like how we progressed in the sport and got to where we are now with pro models and stuff like that, which is something obviously we're both super, super stoked on now and coming through with Ronix now getting the pro models. Um, I think things like that is something that working together, we've been able to get sort of quicker and get build our names and our brand up a lot quicker because I know there's times where like I've been out injured and Ryan's been there representing the pair of us and same the other way around. So it's sort of, I think a lot of times like brands sometimes look at us as one, but then we kind of say like, look, it's two of us riders. We're both riding pretty much to the same level. So we want to be treated as almost two individual, two individual riders, but then it's almost like you get two riders representing your brand wherever you go and almost twice the impact of wherever we are. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely I can imagine as well, like my biggest challenge is finding someone to film with and, and yeah. or someone to film me or whatever. So I guess you have each other there. I always say that to Liam, actually. I'm like, I do not know how they... Do you have a filmer? I have people I work with sometimes in Ireland, but like, no, generally I don't. I'm, this year, hopefully, I'm going to have one for the summer, but I, I don't know. No, generally it's like, there's a lot of... It's easier on the boat, though, because you can just hand the camera and be like, hey, yeah, you do true. this. But on the cable, it is a nightmare. Like, it's... it's, it's Difficult, yeah. I, I think this is. So I spoke to John about it, and he was talking to me a little bit, and he said like, the reason the reason we have quite a lot of power together is that, say say like when Ryan was out injured with his knee, he was out for like nearly a whole year, and that whole time it just meant that he could sit and film me, and it's the yeah. same vice versa. If like if if I'm out injured, well if he's out injured, I can film him. I'm yeah. around. <laughs> <laughs> he can film me, and if I'm injured, I can film him. And, when we're both riding, we both film each other. So yeah. we can be pumping out stuff 24-7, like always on the Instagram, always on the YouTube, and that's definitely a benefit it has. And I think another thing as well um, is just, you know, we both kind of realised that filming and editing is something that we want to get into after wakeboarding too. So it's like having a constant, like someone that knows your camera, you know, rather than just handing it to someone, you can kind of then tweak and film it how you want. You can make it a bit more cinematic and... Uh, yeah, edit it, edit it how you want your style, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing as well. Like, you kind of know what you're looking for. Because I found that myself. Like, I did work with one filmer. I still do work with him sometimes um, for, like, a long period of time. And with him, it's like, there's no, like, there's nothing to it. I just hand him the camera. Or he, go, he uses his own camera. But it's like, it's all done. He knows what I want. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. Um, but I have to say, in saying that, like, and if any of you ever do, end up somewhere on your own people are generally pretty down to help you just feel guilty like you know if you're doing laps you're like do you mind getting this one here and then let's say i don't know it's like a double flip's a classic example and i just pussy out 12 laps in a row yeah. <laughs> it's so bad and then you like it makes it worse really um, yeah it all builds up i've actually i've actually just resorted to filming liam first because the guilt when i like i, I get camera shy mate when, <laughs> as, soon as, <laughs> as soon as we whip out the osmo i'm just like oh i can't do it, can't do it. so i'm like whatever i'll get clips of you first and it's like far less pressure for me <laughs> yeah yeah and you've got that in the bag in the bag as well and, and what about like have, do you ever travel alone or like i know you obviously have but is it often I mean, the, the year that Ryan was out when he blew his knee out, I did a lot of travelling by myself. So I probably, literally, I did like, a, it was one of my most heavy years of competing, I'd say. And I was travelling to Russia and I know I went to some other places. I, can't, I think it was a yard sale and stuff I went to when you were, yeah, yeah. you were out. And that was like a big year for me to travel by myself. But it's like something that we've definitely realised is through travelling together, like social media is such a big, powerful thing now in almost any kind of sport and with it being so important the more we can travel together means the more clips we can get the more photos we can get so on the whole we try and travel together sort of most of the time because for that reason it just means that we can get a lot more footage a lot more stuff like that and normally we don't really have a reason to travel anywhere by yeah. ourselves we kind of do most yeah. stuff together so it's pretty handy to be and there. it's lonely on your own exactly <laughs> Uh, no, that's it. And then, 
What about because actually I was thinking of the one event, Liam, that I was at, and this is gonna. Do you reckon I? It's one of the questions I've had because I've had it in my head for like whatever nine months now. In Munich, Mash last year, obviously the most insane finals run, like ridiculous. That double off the what was that called? Even the the, the two double back roll off the Felix rail. Yeah, the Felix rail. Yeah, <laughs> and then obviously like that moment, there's like the crowds insane. I like, are you, like, I don't, you don't have to be honest, but like, did you think of that moment? Because I, I was commentating for Red Bull TV and I was like, he's done it. Like, I thought you'd won it there. And then I felt you got robbed and it really didn't occur to me until after the show. And I kind of watched it back and I was like, we really did get robbed there. <laughs> I mean, I think that's definitely one thing I've learned over the years in competing that you can never, you can never really truly call a result until you've heard that result yourself. And I think, like I don't know it's just a lot of times competing where you think it's gone your way and it hasn't and that's definitely something you have to learn in in competition and I think yeah I guess there is times like that where people will say someone should have won that didn't win and I think yeah. unless you're in I, I know from judging myself unless you're in that judging tower yourself watching every little trick sometimes it's quite hard to to not yeah. see the bigger picture but there's definitely I mean, times like that, I like to put my own, I like to do my own runs and try and keep things unique and individual. And I think a lot of the time for me, just, just having the crowd there and having people go crazy for it is often almost yeah. as good as winning, you know? Yeah, and, and as well, and like you said, and then as well, it can also happen the other way where you might think, hmm, I don't know, and then you might, I'm sure that's I learned, like what goes I learned around that one the tough way, actually. I came um, third in Plastic Playground. What year was that? 20... 20- 2016 or yeah. something. Yeah. And uh, anyways, I was in the semi finals and I did my run and I messed it up and I was like, oh, it's like, fuck it, I haven't made it through this time. <laughs> so as I got out at the end, um, there was like a thing on the end of my board. And sorry to say this, Monix, but I got out and I was just so mad. I was like, you could have done that. So I like pulled the end of my board open, walked back down to the dock, and then uh, they're like, <laughs> Who yeah, does that? I was <laughs> 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 And then he was like, uh, results came through. It's like Ron Peacock through to the finals. I was like, no, <laughs> it was still riding. I'm, riding I'm pretty sure you're riding both board that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's on the Ronix bill, mate. He <laughs> got like what? third in plastics on a boat. <laughs> hey, yeah. How long ago was this? A while ago, back in my four years ago now or something. Yeah. yeah. So cable boards were a thing, though. Yeah, yeah, they were. But we were like, I think we were still kind of up and coming at that stage. Yeah, and I would say that kind of. That was the year before I flew out to America for the first time. And it was kind of at that point when I was like, oh, maybe this can be like something more than hobby, yeah. you know? More than ripping boards over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could have gone into, I don't know, some sort of YouTube walking ride and rip open today. <laughs> yeah. What's inside? <laughs> yeah. Probably a larger audience than waveboarding, to be fair. <laughs> um, and then, and like, and that's because you mentioned there previously about uh, doing stuff after waveboarding or whatever. So, first of all, did you even think, like, or did you always know, like, you would probably be professional waveboarders and you would do this full-time? or And is it full-time, I guess? That's, I don't even know that, actually. I'm guessing um, it is. Yeah, so originally, when I was actually in school, I used to want to be a physiotherapist, and that was kind of my, like, main goal, you know. Um, and then I got to, like, year 10, and we had to do work experience. And I went and did work experience with my physio, Neil Minty. Great physio, if anyone's watching. <laughs> and, uh, I've actually heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and so I went and did work experience with him and I was just like sat in there and it, I wanted to do sports stuff you know but he got a load of kind of like older people in that had like bad wrist from typing and stuff and I was like oh I don't know if I can don't know if I could do this you know and so after that I was a bit like well I don't really know what I want to do now all I know is that I really enjoy wakeboarding and like hanging at the lake with the boys and uh yeah just kind of progressed it from there until yeah, here we are. It is, it is full time at the moment, yeah. I guess yeah, I guess for me as well, it's kind of sort of similar. I was going through school and then it got to like my last year of sick form and uh, I think I was away, like probably nearly away from sick form more than I actually was there. And I think it got to like the prom at the end of sick form and I turned up and people didn't even know I still went to the school. <laughs> and then at that point, I was like, all I knew is that I didn't want to go to uni because I didn't want to, I didn't really enjoy school that much. And the whole time I would just get out and go to the lake and spend all evening at the lake. So after that, I was like, I knew I was kind of good at riding. And I obviously we've been on the Team GB team for so long. And we were sort of picking up sponsors and getting a little bit of money here and there. And then we sort of realised that 
when, once I'd left school, I just had to put everything into my wakeboarding and riding and really didn't have any other idea of what I wanted to do. So for the fact that it did pay off was good. And I think yeah. we were working part-time jobs, both at trampoline parks, I think it yeah. was. And maybe Ryan was at Liquid. And I just remember saying to my manager, I was like, it got to one of the winters, uh, or maybe it was one of the summers, and I said, okay, I don't think I'm going to need any work sort of this year, but can you just like keep my name on the books in case I have to come back and work? And I, I went and competed that whole summer and made a bit of a name for myself. And then it got to the winter and I went away and I'd managed to make enough money and through sponsors paying me while I was away, I was able to not go back to my job after that. And that was a pretty huge step for both of us to then take it full time. And yeah, I yeah. think something that we got, we can only thank our sponsors for as well. And what was the one? Because for me, there was definitely one. Like I went from similar, it was a gradual thing. And that's, people think it happens overnight, but it was like I had a few sponsors. I was making a little bit, same with a few competition like results. But then it was like, particularly at one moment, it was like a new contract that basically enabled me to like make that leap. And did you guys, was that the same for you? Yeah, I think like over time, well, we, we had some pretty good contracts when we were still working. And then we realized, we were like, well, if we can just step it up a little bit with these guys or get one more sponsor here, then we'll be able to do it. And uh, yeah, I think after that, it went really well. And then we actually had one of our sponsors drop out. Yeah. And then that was kind of a big blow for us. But then we, we sort of renegotiated with other sponsors and just tried our best to like keep pushing for it. And there was often times where they'd be like, we need you to do this this year. And we would just be like, right, we're going to, do we're going to do it like so good that when it gets to the end of the year there's no way yeah. that they can turn around and say to us that we didn't do it you know it definitely yeah. was not a uh not an easy park i'm sure it's the same for you david yeah, yeah. but i think yeah. yeah a lot of people like a lot of our friends nowadays i think think that we just sit around and do nothing a lot of the time you know yeah. but they, don't, they haven't really seen kind of the work that goes in behind the scenes yeah no and that's the thing and people don't realize even with youtube you think okay this is like just you just upload a video you film it like this so and particularly like you guys yeah. definitely the, the quality is a high level and actually the quality do you ever like last year was it like probably this time last year you guys were doing it every single day and i remember yeah. watching i was like i know they have two of them but my god the editing that's going into that like is just yeah. outrageous i was like that's i th- i actually saw i was like that is going to be unsustainable because i thought it was unsustainable by literally just clipping tricks so I was like, never mind if we're doing all the transitions and colour grading and everything. Yeah, like, cool. yeah we um, started doing that again this year for a little bit whilst we were away. Because when we're travelling, we're doing so much that it's actually quite easy to have an idea of something to do every day. Yeah. But I think since getting home and not being up so much, we like actually looked into some of the YouTube algorithms and things like that. And we decided now that we're going to try and do maybe like once a week or something, once we're getting out again, just do like, one video that's packed full of really good stuff and slightly longer so our recent yeah. one from wayne's world was like 20 minutes long yeah and i think it was probably our best blog yeah, yeah it's been good i haven't so, seen yeah, that we're we're gonna gonna be yeah that place looks sick like though that. it's it, so yeah, good yeah it's cool yeah you have to come actually david and is it just completely private or what's the story yeah it's so, in his back garden yeah so uh he just kind of bought the system too and Billy um he rides on Ronix and Mystic with us. He he just gets to shred it in his back garden. Yeah, and then he throws some parties there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it looks, <laughs> it looks like it gets pretty loose sometimes for sure. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good there. Uh and then like kind of the other question I had was with like the YouTube thing was uh when like and I've been really lucky now lately or like in general, but like have you when you started that, did you get much grief at all? Or was it kind of cool? Weirdly, like, weirdly, no. Not to our faces anyway. I don't know what anyone was saying, saying behind our backs. But we, oh, you should hear the stuff they're saying in get, Ireland. I <laughs> expected <laughs> to get... <laughs> David, David's just bitching about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, just stuff. straight up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like, Ryan said about it, and I was like, oh, I don't know. And then it got to the stage where we realised, you're like, look, if, if you want to make some good money, you almost have to, like, sort of swallow your ego or whatever, swallow your pride and just get on with it and do what you have to do. And we were like, the, we've seen now the power that a YouTube view has compared to anything else. Like, oh, gets yeah. people talking. And we, I think we turned up to the airport once in England, like a, earlier in the year or something. Yeah. And the girl that served us at check-in had seen us on YouTube and things like that. And it's like, you think, obviously, we're, we're at like 
what we 7,500 yeah. at the moment or something. And in the grand scheme of things, really isn't that many subscribers. But for people to start recognizing you like that, it just shows the power yeah. of it. And I think that's what keeps us motivated, you know. But it's so much more powerful than, and I prefer Instagram. Like I prefer using, like it's it's way less work. But definitely yeah. the power because someone's watching like you said you made your last video is 20 minutes long so if you get a thousand people watching that that is way more valuable to whatever to you or to the brand yeah, you're yeah. or to anyone than watching a photo looking at a photo or like a, a 10 second clip on instagram recently honestly i've been kind of a bit not like slack on instagram but i i just would rather put a bit of time into making like a good youtube video you know because i just feel like instagram is so kind of and that's such a norm now. It seems like, like once they lost the likes and stuff, everything kind of lost its power. But yeah, I yeah. just think like YouTube as well, someone's like solely gone out to look for that video or gone out of their way to be there watching yeah. you. People have got a lot more time. Whereas Instagram, you just flick through and it's like, if you saw someone flicking through on Instagram and ask them what video they watched like three posts ago, they would have no idea. It's like yeah. it just goes in and goes straight out. Whereas and YouTube, yeah, yeah. YouTube, YouTube, your audience is a lot yeah. more kind of, they, they are subscribed to you for that content, you know, I've, my followers on Instagram, I, I have no reason, like, I, I literally don't know why they follow me, some of them, yeah, really. I'd like to hope that they follow me for the right reasons, but, <laughs> but that Tinder know. article probably, probably, <laughs> <laughs> did that help? Um, I think it did actually, it did help. Just, we, we got Tinder Gold from that, me and Rocco, <laughs> all three of us got Tinder Gold. So that was uh, that was probably one of the main ways that helps all of us. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was just a funny scenario, to be honest. What the, the funny, I think the funniest thing about it is Ryan's like, yeah, I'm uh, I'm going up to London to do this photo shoot, and uh, I think me and Rocco were here or something. He rocks up. He's like, I just bought some new shoes for her, uh, and he he walks in. He's got these Primark like Primark version of Vans on. I'm like, Ryan. You're going for like a Tinder top 30 shoot and you're going to rep these like Primark bags. <laughs> and I think you got so much stick for that. It was Mate. so funny. Well, basically what happened was I was just, I don't know, we were in Germany at the time, weren't we? And we were at the um, like Ronix European sales meeting. <laughs> and I was just on my phone and I got an email notification come through. And it was like, congratulations, you've been preliminarily selected as the top 30s most swiped right uh, like guys on Tinder in the UK. And I was like, this has to be a scam. <laughs> like, there's no way that this is real, you know? And so I told Liam, and he was like, oh, wait, let me check my emails then. I must have got one. Mom's too drunk. <laughs> 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 so get one, so he's a bit salty about that. But yeah, basically, long story short, I ended up, yeah, like Liam says, going into London for a photo shoot and then it was published in Cosmopolitan magazine. <laughs> but the funny thing is, anyone that knows me just knows that I do not care about, like, style or fashion or anything you know yeah. <laughs> catfish really but yeah it's so, funny but that went around like that even popped into like a whatsapp group i was in like unrelated to wakeboarding just like my friends <laughs> in dublin i was like i actually but know one of them some of the comments on it were unbelievable like people just Good. love ripping into some people yeah. for no reason don't they There's some people oh. just commenting like oh wow like not even one of them is attractive and stuff and i was just like <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you didn't even choose to be there. Like you just got yeah. kind of invited. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, sure, listen. Um, but yeah, so, so then what's... Because uh, I know you guys were supposed to do... We spoke a little bit off camera about this. The ultimate wave for the road trip. But that's been cancelled. Yeah, we've had canceled. some... Uh, we're, I think we're on postpone right now. But we've had some yeah, pretty major upsets. Like It's actually weird for us. Because we had such a packed out year this year. That I think... Almost till the end of August, we have basically something lined up. And for, yeah, obviously we had the road trip that we were super excited about. We we're going to be working with Wayne and head out there and do that with everyone. And unfortunately now we can't even fly out for that. And then we were meant to be going on to do one of our wakeboard camps in Turkey as well after that. Yeah. So it's actually quite crazy for us to have that time. We've got like now pretty much six weeks with nothing planned. And obviously now we've got, great excuse to stay in home and do nothing all the time but yeah we're, it's boring we're kind of looking forward to, to a bit of freedom but yeah currently at the moment it's not looking yeah. like that's going to happen anytime soon but we're hoping to get that back rolling as soon as we can you know yeah and do you think uh, has any events been like con contests been cancelled yet 
Yeah, yeah. I, uh, Munich Mash has been cancelled, hasn't it? Yeah, I had the Langenfeld. Oh, yeah. Has it? Yeah. The Langenfeld yeah. Open. I don't know about Munich Mash yet, but I was invited to Langenfeld and just heard that that's been cancelled, which sucks. I think it's looking looking okay for plastic playgrounds. They're saying, but they're saying yeah. hold off on flights. So no one yeah. can really no one can really say yeah. if anything's going ahead yet. So. I think Worlds got cancelled. Yeah, there was the IWWF Worlds meant to be in Thailand in September, which has now been pushed back to 21. That's yeah, crazy. So. Mm-hmm. Wow. But yeah, no, it's, everything's getting cancelled. Like, literally, all I've dealt with for the last week is like, just, no, don't do that. No, this isn't happening. No, that. Yeah. Just, it gets like, yeah. And obviously, but like, it's everywhere. Like, it's crazy. Like, the number of, I'm sure, like, about you, I don't know if your friends are working, but like, everyone's just like, it's pretty grim. I don't even really want to talk about it. Everyone's losing their jobs and it's like, it's yeah, awful. Mate. It's heck Fully, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite scary to be honest. And like, luckily for us, we haven't moved out yet, you know. I mean, we, we, we are still getting an income, but to, to think if we had moved out and was paying rent on a place where, yeah. you know. But it's not worth it with all the travel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah that's the thing. We're away too much to even like justify, you know. Mm. Yeah, completely. And then... Um, on a brighter note or maybe a little less bright the crashes there's been some hectic crashes like obviously you're both ridiculous on a wakeboard but it comes with it's it's kind of and particularly with you Liam I've actually always noticed it's almost like you don't think about the consequence of like I don't know like some, when I'm trying anything I'm like thinking looking at every different angle and I've seen you like particularly in Munich Mash in the flesh the first year I saw you there you it was I think it was your second year and you like came you nearly hit the back of the kicker and like I was there with yeah. CK on the side, and we were like, Ugh! and you were just like, oh, I was like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, for me, it's just, it's always been a way that I could cope with fear is that if I, I try not to, over, I don't really overthink it at all, and then I really try not to think about what could go wrong and mainly focus on what could go right. And definitely, like, I see it in Graham's riding and stuff like that, Graham Barres, when he rides, I think a lot of people might say the same for him, but I think, for me, in my riding, I like to do things that almost no one's thought of or maybe no one's been brave enough to try it, you know. So I think yeah. I've always been quite a ballsy rider and definitely like something something that I like in my style is that I do go out and, you know, I try like the doubles. I, I love to try and do sort of worlds first. And it's almost like making my mark on the sport and pushing it to where I want to go. So a lot of flips on rails I like to do. I know Ryan's been starting doing loads more of them as well. And yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think if you focus too much on the consequences, then it's always going to go wrong. And lucky for me, it only goes wrong some of the times. But I think when yeah. it does go wrong, it goes pretty wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Drastically wrong. And, yeah. and you said there that like now Ryan's you're doing more flips on rails. Has that always grown up? I don't have a brother, but like I can only imagine it, the competitiveness. Is that, is that is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> as we were like when we were growing up, obviously I was better majority of the time um but then it would just be like you know i'm two years older than him but i'd learn a trick and then teach it to him and then he'd learn it that same day you know so it's basically like we're both pretty much on the same level yeah um and yeah and then kind of along my career i've had a couple of pretty bad injuries so that's kind of set me back a little bit but i would say by that point anyway our riding styles were quite different in a way we both love doing similar things you know we both like doing big gaps and like can both do double flips and stuff you know but yeah i prefer finding like different lines and getting a bit more technical with with my riding whereas liam i i still like trying crazy stuff don't get me wrong but this kid sometimes i question if he's even got a brain <laughs> <laughs> I just I went, so, like, when when ryan came out from his injuries it was probably like within the first month or two he was riding back and he was doing some lines in like the mega pool of liquid where I, A, had never even thought about them and B, wouldn't even know where to start. And I think seeing him riding like that is definitely also like a whole different style that is like there to be explored, you know? Yeah, completely, completely. And, and yeah, and there's so much you can kind of go to. And that's, uh, uh, actually, the one question I had before is, uh, what about, have you done much both? I know we've been trying to film that crossover for about three and a half years now, and we will get there. Yeah. But have you done much <laughs> both? I think, I think for me on this one, I'd say last time I rode boat was Taylor's boat in America, I think it was. And I remember going out and basically got peer pressure into going out onto the boat. And I was like, all right, I'll come out and ride with everyone. 
And I just remember it being so fast. I think I was on my, I was on like a Ronix Kinetic, no fins. It was a 150. <laughs> and I know at one point I did a roll to Reva, bounced off the top of the second wake and got the worst nose edge. And I just remember being in the water and I just thought to myself, I was like, right, as long as I can remember how scary this is, I probably won't be riding a boat anytime <laughs> soon. No, I do want to do it to be fair. Like, it would be a really good video. Like, we do about one boat set a year. So I think if we can do it with you, David, we'll make it happen. I think if you did like two or three as well, like I've ridden the boat with John Dryley as well. And like, he's pretty good. Like obviously you're going to be good because you have so much understanding. But I think if you just got used to the speed and used to the kind of the different, I think the rope pulling down, it almost yeah. gets higher as well. But when you get used to that, it's kind of the same. It's, I, I think it's easier in a way, but obviously that's because that's my background. But it is, it's not that bad. Like I promise. Yeah. It is always quite weird actually when you see kind of, a boat rider comes to the cable park and then a cable rider goes to the boat, you know, a lot of the boat riders would kind of come to the cable park and they'd be like, what? Like, why? Like, how do you do that on that feature? And then I see yeah. what they do off the wake. I'm just like, I think, I think for me, the thing that not like annoys me the most, but I just can't even wrap my head around. It's like people like Massey who, who ride boats so good and then come and do like, double mobile on cable I'm yeah. like it's not fair that anyone yeah. can be that good at both like it there is should crazy. be some rule where like you can <laughs> only be that good at one of them because they're fully different sports like they really 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 are completely different um yeah that's like yeah and obviously I think what's possible on the cable is so much higher obviously that's like you can just look at the tricks but I definitely think and, and, and the one question that people always ask and I'm going to stand here as a boat rider and openly say it what hurts more? And I reckon boat hurts more than cable. When you pull yeah. boat. I think boat hurts more. Unless... The only thing is there's no plastic in boat. Yeah. Unless you're yeah. coming down on your hip on the corner of a ledge, then <laughs> yeah. cable hurts a lot more. <laughs> I think cable's more dangerous. Like, you're more likely to really get, like, a head injury or whatever. Like, a real, real, real injury. But the boat is just day-to-day -day going to beat you off. Front edges and back yeah, edges. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 yeah oh it's horrible like it's i'm still like i've had a bad neck for like honestly like months now because of the stupid back edge on the way and it wasn't even doing anything hard but it's still i hate that like um <laughs> but yeah so i miss them need... sometimes though sometimes I, i'll say to my mates i'm like oh i'm well overdue a back edge <laughs> yeah, yeah and then i'll take it and i'll be like why don't you say that it needs to be it needs to remind you who's boss yeah <laughs> Actually, here's the one other thing. So I did put a thing on my Instagram story you probably saw earlier. I don't even know the code yeah. for this. Um, I was just trying to get questions for you guys from, I don't know what's going on with my phone here, sorry. Um, so I'm going to see if there's any questions here, and I'll let you know. But, uh, so hang on. No one actually responded. Someone just wrote who? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, I, there's loads of people like just asking who's, your favorite friend or something um where did you get your editing skills from so that's actually a good point who does the editing in your, in your youtube videos it's actually um a combination of both of us to be fair um originally it was more me would you say yeah i'd say like over time we both pretty much learned editing off youtube so when we we're doing the daily vlogs like we would do one video each day so we'd both film and then one would edit it the other one would have like an evening off and then we'd swap and alternate and like yeah like the wayne's world one i i just edited that whole one so that was like a pretty long one for me but managed to get it done in like two or three days and then yeah like ryan probably when it comes to the more artsy stuff ryan's definitely got more of a more of a technical Let's head for editing smash that out stuff. the after effects i love it yeah. you do love the after effect that's hard yeah. you know, ryan loves to get nerdy with stuff he's yeah. definitely got like a more of a better brain at that sort of thing whereas i'm more of a better brain throwing myself off things and doing all of that silly yeah. stuff yeah that's mad yeah because I, I and it would be nice i must say now to be able to be like okay you do it tonight i'll do it tomorrow that is pretty yeah awesome. and what, what I do, don't you know how you do it by yourself it must be well, see, i don't do be... it every day now that's why i've got it to like a well this winter's been particularly bad but generally let's say in the summer i'll be like two videos maybe this i'm going to try to do two to three this summer depending on everything but the plan is to get someone else to help me with with it yeah and um, because i do other stuff as well so that's that's the problem like if it was just this i, I reckon i could do like every two days yeah and um, cool. um, yeah, what do you use premiere pro taylor yeah, yeah. premiere pro and then if we want to do like some 
funky transitions and you can actually like do a thing called dynamic link with after effects so you just put your clips okay. in premiere pro and then you can kind of like change them in after effects and it'll change them in real time in premiere you know so okay unreal i know yeah. i could definitely learn a few things um and then what about like in the uk who are the, like the kind of riders who you would like look up to sorry that is a question i just read it somewhere here um like who, what you what uk riders do you look up to is the exact i think for me personally it's like I, I don't even know if I'd say like I really look up to anyone in, anymore. I just more look to like. There's no way to look. I'd say I look more to riding with like all my friends and riding with the boys. So obviously, like we ride with Matt Muncy and and yeah. some of the boys down at Liquid. Obviously, when Joe's home, we ride with him. And I'd say right, yeah. yeah, Kieran Owens as well, definitely. And, yeah, I think riding with those boys is where I get like all my inspiration. Like I know now I'll see Kieran; he'll be riding in front of me, and I'm just like kind of mind blown watching some of the things he's yeah. doing. And I know now I'm like Jesus; I need to step up my game because <laughs> that kid's coming for me. Yeah, that's a scary thing. But that's the best thing ever when you're just following someone around the cable, isn't it? Like, that's that, that's basically I would say mainly how we learn everything really. Because when we used to ride down with JB Ski. We had a crew of probably what, like ten or twelve of us who just go down the lake every day, and then every time we go out, it'd just be like me, Liam, Jack Battleday, Joe Battleday, Matty Muncy, like all in the yeah. line, you know, and they're all just like copying what each other's doing. I think even now as well, like often me and Ryan, if we're if we're getting kind of bummed out and stuff, or can't can't ride how we want, and we just sort of put the cameras down and just both go out like one in front of the other, we have like our best sessions then, even yeah. now, and it's kind of the reason why we started it all was just both having fun together on the water and I think to just take it back to the basics and do that and just go out have a laugh and watch the other one slam on something that they're trying is always funny yeah yeah laughing at other people's expense um, yeah what here's one like what do you uh, what are things that you hate in a wake park I presume that's like not just like obstacles just like in general is there anything you hate it's people that swerve on carriers in front of you is always <laughs> for no reason yeah I don't know, sometimes I get, if, if I'm trying a trick on a feature, and sometimes it's like people can almost sense what feature you want to hit and then create like the perfect <laughs> roll. Or when they're just like, just, like oh, chilling behind the kicker. And you're just like, going, yeah. going straight. I've got to the stage where I'm like, if, if you're behind the kicker and you're like, you crash four carries ahead, I'm like, I'm coming for that kicker. It's <laughs> <laughs> out of the way fast. What's this one? We got, I can't even read it. It's from Chris Rogers. Sorry, I literally just saw it. I was like, oh, Chris Rogers got involved. Yeah, what is your up. favorite color of the alphabet? That's what he's asking. Oh, I can't read the bottom of it. It says something else, but it doesn't show up. Um, <laughs> do you have, is that a joke between you guys? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. That actually makes no sense whatsoever. I know, that's why I was like, I was just being an inside joke. But, have you, have uh, you met Chris before, David? Yeah, I've done, I've shot with him uh, once and I've met him a couple of times. He's, I'm supposed to actually. He's probably watching this and he's like, yeah, that little prick. I was supposed to shoot with him uh, in Abu Dhabi when I was there for the Worlds in November on the finals day. I was, like, not expecting to get to semi. I was, ex I was yeah, I was expecting to ride in the morning at semi-finals and then go shoot with him at the cable. And then I actually hurt myself in the semi-final but got through to the finals. So then I, I basically ended up just, like, kind of bailing on him because I, I had no choice. I had to ride. Yeah. But I kind of feel quite bad about that. So he's probably like, yeah, you should be. Um, but other than that, yeah, I've done. Have you guys done much of them? Yeah, we met up with him in South Africa, actually. Yeah, we did Recently. a little bit of filming at Blue Rock, and yeah, we did some stories and stuff with him. But didn't really have much time to film anything properly. But I know yeah. we'd definitely love to do some more filming with Chris. And he's insane. He was super so cool good. to meet him. Yeah, yeah. his his filming's crazy. Yeah, he was actually good. one of kind of my like biggest inspiration when I was just watching YouTube videos, you know, because. I would like sit there. I think it was his first Bali one that he did. I was like, damn, that is nuts. You know, like it was super cool, like really cool transitions. And then from there, I was like, yeah, I want to learn that. I'd like, yeah. just make everything look sick, you know. Be yeah, he's awesome. insane. See, Liam, that's how you be modest and look up to people. Yeah, yeah, I look <laughs> up to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I like your lesson. Um, I don't really think there's a lot of like, just kind of, so, oh, there's, I don't know, like, do you have a trick that took the longest to learn? We'll leave it oh, that I think on the, there's like kind of three stages to this, I'd say. 
Rainy definitely took long to learn, was definitely a dark time in my life. I remember <laughs> sitting in the car going to the lake with my dad and Ryan and they're like, okay, so we're having Rayleigh sessions tonight. And I was just like, I, don't need, I, do, I do not want to do this anymore. <laughs> and then you got through that stage and obviously you've got your switch railings, your toe sides and all that to learn, which sucks. And then for both of us, we had, we had double flips, which was, yeah. again, that was probably, I think I first started learning them when I was 13 and probably didn't land my first one until I was maybe 15, 15 I, think I think. Yeah, so that was like two years. And then after that, for me, trying the double peak took me, I think I started trying that when I was about 16 and some or like variations of it off my heel side doing like a double roll to blind and stuff and didn't obviously land that till I was 19 I think yeah. so there's been some dark yeah. times but we worked through them <laughs> yeah what about you Ryan um honestly probably the worst thing that I've tried to learn was toe side railies that took me so <laughs> long mate and just so many bad front edges you would not believe yeah. And you'd like, I'd get that. up in the air and be like, this is it, I've got it, I've got it. And then I just straight down front edge. And then one day it just clicked, you know, I actually did, love doing toe side air tricks. I think, now, but I think what you said that always, always rings a bell in my head. Ryan said to me, always stay humble to the toe side railing. <laughs> and I think now there's even times where I've done toe sides and been like, I should not have got away with that. <laughs> I think you always do the one where you whip around the corner and just get like a front edge yeah. and be concussed for the rest of the day. And, so always stay humble to the toe side, Rayleigh. Really. That's the. Uh... Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. I've never done one. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I don't. I don't know you, Air trick. I can't. I can't get any height on it. Like genuinely, like I can do like all the basic air tricks, um, but I can't. I just can't get any height like, at all. It doesn't Mate, really it make is, sense. It is so weird when you learn it because you're trying to cut and you're just like everything feels so twisted up. It does like, not make sense. It just doesn't feel like you're in a good position at all. And and with it's weird once you can do them. Is it the same as you want a little demonstration it, right now? Yeah, a little demo, a little <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> Here's my clickbait now. How's your toes on ready? With Ryan and me and Peter. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh God! So you want to keep your arms like locked in here, yeah. Keep yeah. your hips forward, and then as you're like cutting, <laughs> nah, my balance isn't good. But basically, you just imagine that you're like chipping up a football, you know, and then <laughs> so you get pulled up. Out. But you, you don't do want a dentist chair because if yeah. you trip up and like keep your legs here, you're just going to what's called the dentist chair, where your legs are bent. You're, you're like laying on your back and you're just like squirming around so you have to bring your shoulders round yeah. which then brings the board out and then and then from there it's just like a crypt like a normal crypt you know back to left foot or you yeah, get the I, nose edge which we know so well which yeah. is <laughs> and did you learn it switch toe side or regular toe side first we're both actually left foot forward so we learned okay, it, so yeah, yeah regular we had to learn original air tricks right foot yeah, didn't we yeah. which was that was weird but yeah, yeah I can imagine <laughs> Um, right, well, I, I don't really, like, I just kind of ring in for a chat, so that's kind of all I have, really. Um, I don't know, do you have anything else you'd like to add? I think, I think we're pretty good, yeah. I guess. Maybe plug the channel, so... Yeah, of course, guys... yeah, I'll, I'll plug that <laughs> at the beginning. I'll, I'll do an intro separate, so I'll, uh, I'll oh, plug really. that. Um, but yeah, that's it, really. Um, so obviously no one has any plans. It's kind of like, normally you can tell me, oh, I'm going to Venezuela tomorrow, but... Yeah, yeah. I think realistically this year we're going to mainly focus i guess now we were going to do it anyway but we're going to be home a lot more and hopefully traveling around a lot more of the uk and hope maybe get over and see you guys for a little bit over there as well if yes. you can so yeah there's a lot of fan boys here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we, yeah, we, we need to do it for about three years now yeah. <laughs> we nearly did remember we nearly got i know we were in germany oh, america yeah we'll get it done We'll get it done. This is our year. Well, hopefully when this dies down, I mean, I've got everything I'm doing has nearly been cancelled till August. So, yeah. We'll have um, loads to yeah, so hopefully the world gets under control soon. And, yeah. 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 Sweet. Anyway. Well, okay. yeah, good to, good to chat with you, man. Stay safe. You too. Hands. Thank, yeah, likewise. And uh, yeah. stay home, most importantly. You will. Okay, you will. see you. Thanks a million, boys. And chat to you. And yeah, sure, I guess. Right. If people keep an eye on the comments, if people engage or whatever, I don't know. I've no clue. Maybe people will hate this. Could be shit. Like <laughs> awesome. Anyway.
Cheers, guys. Nice See one, you David. Soon. See you later. Cheers, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that little podcast. They're pretty interesting guys and massive respect to them because they kind of saw how things are going in the wakeboarding and they've completely made the most out of that and are really progressing it both off the water but also obviously massively. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Ryan and Liam, for coming on. I really appreciate it. You were effectively the guinea pigs of this whole thing. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching um, or listening or whatever you did. Let us know any guests you'd like on and I will do my best to get my hands on them because I feel like... Some people are going to be bored and may stoop so low as to joining us on this YouTube channel. See you soon.